you're back in Tyler, Texas, East Texas. Let me tell you something. We are going to win in 2020. I know that right now just by looking at this crowd. This is all we need to win right here, right here in Tyler, Texas. Let me tell you what's going on. We're going to win because we're going to show the contrast between the success that conservative policies have achieved versus the, the radical ideology that Beto O'Rourke is preaching and how it would destroy our state. The contrast we're going to do is extraordinary. Under the conservative principles that have been guiding Texas under my leadership, Texas has the fastest growing economy of any state in the United States of America. <laughs> Since you are last re-elected me to be your governor, Texas has added far more new jobs than any other state in the United States. You know, but oftentimes, listen, we've had so much success with regard to business, it's easy to take it for granted. What you've got to understand is the way that all of that would be compromised with the values and principles that Beto O'Rourke has been articulating. He's talked about raising your taxes, imposing more regulations, that would destroy our businesses, we will not let that happen. I am running for re-election to keep Texas the number one state. So there, there are some good byproducts to Texas having such a strong economy. One is that we are sitting on a $27 billion budget surplus. That's the result of all the goods and services you all have helped provide. So we will use that $27 billion this session to address our needs, including schools and health care. But who's, who's, whose money is that? Oh. You're exactly right. And so most of it, meaning I want at least half of it, to go back to you with the largest property tax cut ever. In the history of the state of Texas. Here again, there is a gaping divide between myself and, and Beto because Beto, when he was on city council, he raised property taxes three different times. We don't need anybody in the governor's office who's ever raised property taxes. I am running for re-election to cut your property taxes, period. Now, I know that East Texas is also a very meaningful sector of our state with regard to oil and gas production. Right. And oil and gas production is one of the things that has helped Texas have the leading economy in the United States. And this is so important because uh, Beto, he's kind of against oil and gas production. He embraced the radical leftist ideology of the Green New Deal that would destroy oil and gas production. It would, it would cause hundreds of thousands of jobs to be lost and it would cause the price that you pay at the pump to go up even more. I am running for re-election to keep Texas the number one oil and gas producing state in the United States. But you know, we, we see Beto's radical leftist ideology even infiltrating our schools. I see people holding up Parents Matter sound. Let me tell you something. When it comes to our schools, nothing matters more than parents. No one can love a child as much as a parent can love a child. And i got to tell you something. Beto O'Rourke, he has said that he supports the use of critical race theory in our schools. He said teachers can teach. He literally, he literally said teachers can teach whichever version of history they want to teach. That is wrong. Let me tell you, I will not use your taxpayer dollars to teach our kids to hate our country. We live... I know you here in town, you agree with me. We live in the greatest country in the history of the world, and we need to be educating our kids why we are great, what it took us to be great, and what it is needed for the United States to remain the greatest country in the history of the world. <laughs> well, there's something far more dangerous, far more insidious about Be Beto's radical leftist ideology and policies. It's what he's doing that compromises your safety yep. in our cities. Yep. And that is his support of defunding the police. Yeah. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah. Wherever you've seen this taking place has led to more crime, not less crime. 
We even saw it in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas, the blue liberal city of our state, they defunded their police by more than $100 million. And what it led to was a record number of murders in Austin, Texas. Defunding the police is deadly. So I worked with Cole Hefner and with Senator Hughes in this past session we passed legislation that would ensure that we would defund any city that defunds their police in Texas. In Texas, we do not defund our police. We support our law enforcement officers. Too. So looking around, speaking of law enforcement and the bravery, I see some men and women either wearing hats or insignia showing that they serve in our military. Let's yes. remember this. Let's remember this. And, and that is, for one, we wouldn't have the freedoms we have without them. For another, they did not put their lives on the line only to see politicians adopt socialistic policies that undermine the freedom that they fought for. We need to, we need to recognize by them waving their hands every man and woman in the crowd who's ever worn the uniform of our United States military. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. I, I, one thing I know about them, they feel the way that I feel and the way that you feel. And that may be the, the most dangerous thing that President Biden has done is his radical, leftist, wacky, open border policies that are destroying our country. So remember this, that man right there, Trump has a Trump hat on. It was, it, was, it, was, it was President Trump, and it was just two years ago, we had the lowest border crossings in decades. It was because President Trump put into place four key principles. Remain in Mexico policy, the Title 42 policy, the ending of catch and release, and the building of the border wall. And maybe on top of that, the attitude, and that is, if you want to come to the United States, come here legally, not illegally. Yeah. Because of Biden's open border policies, we now have had this past year more than 2.2 million people coming across the border. Let's put this in context. Many of you, not all of you, have been to Dallas, Texas. More than two Dallases came across our border this one year. That's how substantial and consequential the open border policies are. And because Biden is not doing his job, Texas is stepping up and doing the federal government's job. If you go back to the time of George Washington and go all the way to Joe Biden, there's only one state in the history of the United States of America that has built its own border wall, and that is the great state of Texas. We have members of the National Guard that are repelling people trying to come into our country. They have turned back tens of thousands of people trying to get into the United States. And if they make it past them, they encounter uh, the Texas Department of Public Safety. DPS is arresting people coming across the border either for trespassing in Texas or arresting them and returning them to the border. Just two weeks ago, they arrested a man from Honduras. And as they were booking him, they learned that there was a warrant out for his arrest for murder. They are dealing with murderers coming across our border. It is extraordinarily dangerous, incomprehensible. Why the Biden administration is not doing more to shut this down. But listen, so when you see the, the people, people coming across the border fall into several different categories. One are people that DPS will arrest. Another is people that National Guard will turn back. But if you see on the TV, you see people going in single file, being led across the river and you see they're being led by someone, that someone being leading them across the river, is a cartel member. They come here with the aid and assistance and by paying money to cartels. And the cartels know exactly where to take those people because they know if they take them to land that's owner controlled by the state of Texas, they're gonna be arrested. Instead, they take them to land that's owner controlled and operated by the federal government, where the border patrol are located because if they take those people to where the border patrol are located, the Border Patrol is simply going to fill out their paperwork and then let them go with authority anywhere they want into the United States. And because they were doing that so much, 
and then dropping migrants off into small little towns on the border, like Eagle Pass and Del Rio. And those small communities were completely overrun and overwhelmed with the number of migrants dropped off into their community. That is exactly why I sat down with the, the mayors, the county judges and the sheriffs of those local communities last April. I said, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to begin busing them yep, yep, to yep, sanctuary yep, cities yep, across yep, the United States of America. Yep, 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 yep. So the, the first, first place, so I'm, I'm getting a whole lot of suggestions up here about <laughs> locations. So let me, let, me tell you what, let me tell you what's going on. Obviously, the first place to know that we bust them to was Washington, D.C. So why Washington, D.C.? Two reasons. One, Washington, D.C. is a self-declared sanctuary city. They made the promise, they made the commitment that they would take care of anybody coming into our country illegally until, until they actually had to do it. They had to do it, they couldn't take it. They had a couple of hundred people. Like, we get that many people in an hour. And they could not handle it. But there was another reason why we did it. Let's go back to what I said earlier. Two years ago, we had the most secure border in decades under President Trump. All that changed because of one person. Yep. One person has caused the problem that we have on the border, Joe Biden. Exactly. And during that entire time, Joe Biden has never bothered himself to travel down to the border and see the chaos that he's caused. So I figured if he's not going to go to the border, Texas is going to the border to Joe Biden. And then you may have seen that the location where we're dropping them off in Washington, D.C. has changed. We are now dropping them off at the residence yep. of the Vice President herself. <laughs> she said that the border was secure and there was no problem on the border. I felt a need to be involved in the education process to help her understand the border is not secure. Exactly. So the, 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 the strangest thing happened, and that is we were busing people only to Washington, D.C. And out of nowhere, this Mayor Adams guy from New York City started criticizing me for dropping them off in New York City, which we were not doing. We showed the paperwork. We were not doing that. But that did not stop him from complaining and criticizing me for, for sending migrants to New York City. So after a while, I figured, heck, if I'm going to get the criticism, I'm going to get the criticism. But that changed everything. That changed everything because, as you all know, New York City is the media headquarters for the entire world. Yeah. And once these illegal immigrants began showing up in overwhelming New York City, then everybody had to report it. You knew what was happening on the border because you live in Texas. Yeah. Many of you watch Fox News and you see their stories there. But if you were watching ABC or NBC or CBS or MSNBC or CNN, yeah. you had no idea there was a problem on the border until they began showing up in New York City. And now New York City has a couple of days' worth of illegal immigrants that we have. They have about 20, 25,000. Don't know what the latest number is. But here's the point. They've declared an emergency. They've declared a disaster. The Mayor Adams is seeking, get this, Mayor Adams is seeking $1 billion for them to deal with the few migrants that they have there. Listen, if New York City gets a billion dollars for that, Texas deserves a trillion dollars for what we have in Texas. Now let me tell you something, all this is about to change is about to change soon, let me tell you why. One reason is because on November, November the 8th, we are going to elect three Latinas from South Texas. <laughs> to, to, to congressional seats that have always been held by Democrats. And those three Latinas, two of whom are married to Border Patrol officers. <laughs> And the first thing they're going to do is they are going to fire Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> as the second thing they're going to do is they're going to fully fund border security, which means border patrol, ICE, building the wall, doing everything the federal government should be doing to secure the border. And the third thing they're going to do is to refund 
the state of Texas for every penny that we have spent doing the federal government's job. The last thing I'll tell you about this may be the deadliest thing, and that is the importation across our border by the cartels of deadly drug of fentanyl. I was with some parents in San Antonio, Texas just the other day who lost a 17-year-old daughter. What happens is uh, the elements of fentanyl come from China and they go to Mexico where the drug cartels lace it onto drugs that look like valid drugs that you would buy at a drugstore. And when people get those drugs, it's called a one pill kill. People have no idea that fentanyl is laced onto one of these drugs. They take the pill and they lose their life, like this 17 year old did. The leading cause of death in the United States right now between, of ages between 18 and 45 is fentanyl. Texas law enforcement alone over the past year have seized enough fentanyl that would have killed every man, woman, and child in the entire United States of America. So that alone is reason for us to have law enforcement down on the border in Operation Lone Star because think of where those drugs would have gone, the damage they would have done had we not seized them. But because the cartels are importing all of these fentanyl drugs, killing our Americans, that's exactly why last month I declared the Mexican drug cartels as terrorists. And we are going after them to seize every one of our states. All right, so listen. Listen, let, let me just close, close by this. There's a lot, a lot on the line this election. There's your jobs, your taxes. There's your safety, your freedom. But I gotta tell you, here in Tyler, there may be something even more significant than all of that combined. Your values are on the ballot this election. It's gonna be your values versus the woke left agenda values. And we cannot cede them. But let me tell you something else that may surprise you a little bit. And that is, the winner or loser of this election, it's not gonna be me. The winner or loser of this election is going to be you all, that's exactly right. And so this is, this is your election for you, and it's going to take you to make sure that happens. And, and understand this, because someone who disagrees uh, with the values of the state of Texas is better or war. So your, it's your family, your children, your grandchildren, and your future is on the line. And what Beto wants to do is to take a sledgehammer to that future and replace it with his vision of the radical leftist ideology. Well, guess what? We are not going to let that happen in our state. We are going to Beto and win and keep Texas red up and down the ballot. But listen, you all know as well as I do what it takes to achieve that. It's one thing to get up here and say it. It's another thing to do it. And to do it requires one thing, vote. you got to vote. Now listen, I know many of you have already voted, but I know many of you have not voted. And you know the old saying, listen, for, for those who don't know, I grew up in Longview, Texas, and when I was in Longview, Texas, in the Boy Scouts Troop 201, we were taught, do not, we got a Troop 201, there you go. The, the oldest Boy Scout Troop in East Texas. In, anyway, we were taught, among other things, do not put off until tomorrow what you can do today. It, it's four o'clock today, and I know you have time to do this. So let me tell you this. I'm gonna talk for one more minute, and then take a picture with anybody who wants a picture, and, and then I need and want you to go vote. And I'm gonna tell you where to go. It's, it's the closest <laughs> voting location. You may have your own location, but if you're looking for one, go to the Heritage Building at 1900 Bell, Bellwood Road. That's the Heritage Building at 1900 Bellwood Road. You have no reason or excuse to go vote. And after you vote, whether you voted today or yesterday or voting later on today, you gotta do one more thing. You gotta go home and you gotta get out your cameras, many of which are holding in your hands as we speak right now. You got it in your hand, your pocket, your purse, whatever the case may be. You have in your phone something I do not have in my phone. You have the contacts with all your friends, all your neighbors, all the people that you're texting to all the time. Those people need to hear from someone who reminds them about the necessity of going to vote. 
we have all together, when you include the people in the overflow room in the back, we have about 500 people here. And here's, here's what I want. I want everybody here to use your contacts. If everyone uses, on average, 100 of your contacts and sends them one message tonight that says, go vote for Governor Abbott tomorrow, period. And so here's what, here's what you got to do. You've got to do that tonight, but you know as well as I do. They may ignore it or they may not reply to it, whatever the case may be. So you got to do that tonight, tomorrow night, the next night, the next <laughs> night. you got to keep doing it every single night until you get a return picture from someone that has a sticker on that says, look, I voted. <laughs> or until you get a reply text that says, if you ever text me again. <laughs> Either way, you got to do that every single day. And so if you do your share to make sure that in this group we're going to turn out 50,000 votes on election night on November the 8th, I will be declaring victory over Beto. And I will say the reason I won is because of what happened in Tyler, Texas here today. So thank you all for doing your part and doing your share to make sure we keep Texas, Texas. We will win and we will keep Texas the best state and the greatest country in the history of this world. God bless you all and God bless the great state of Texas.